Amanda from Cultural Journalism Campus and we are here today at Art Basel 2018 and we are very lucky to have a Sri Lankan artist, uh, Ramesh, uh, with us today and uh, this is his artwork called um, Mudman Volume 2 uh, which is featured uh, as the encounter of Art Basel this year. Um, Ramesh, um, uh, I noticed that you are a Sri Lankan artist and yes. you are based in um, Sydney. Yes. Um, is this uh, cultural heritage affect um, your work? Does it influence um, yes. your artwork? Um, well, I was born in I was born in Sri Lanka, but I came to Australia when I was one. Mm -hmm. So I've lived in Australia for 28 years, um, and I think I think what's always interested me in, interested me is there's this real difference between. Um, I guess if you be very general to start with, I guess Eastern and Western aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm really interested in um, uh, polychrome, so multicolored mm -hmm. palettes. And um, I think that's really what drew me to the visual kind of vernaculars mm -hmm. in Hinduism. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that, you know, things had lots of colors, lots of arms, gold, it was quite over the top, uh, which I think where I grew up, particularly in lots of Western contexts, can be perceived as quite trashy or uh -huh. tacky. <laughs> um, no. So I think in that respect, um, it, on a very base level, it was colour that drew me to mm. these, these these kinds of representations. Mm. Um, you mentioned uh, Hinduism. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how religion and yeah, also yeah. Christianity, how does it yeah, yeah. Um, affect how you work and how does it influence uh, your art? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess I'm exploring religion from a cultural perspective, mm -hmm. so this isn't religious art in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of use in mind the religious references because uh, like my mom has kind of Dutch heritage and then my dad is Hindu and mm -hmm. I think as a migrant coming to Australia um, they tried to impose kind of both religions on me which was kind of interesting um, as a child but I was never into any of them um, but I was interested in learning about them um, so I think I started from there and what I'm kind of really interested in is um, I guess representations of the male body and mm -hmm. uh, patriarchy and um, I think in Christianity and Hinduism, kind of representations of men are very different. Mm. Um, so that was really the kind of starting point of my research. Mm. Uh, I noticed that your work is very um, fluid in terms of gender. Is that yeah, how yeah. you intend uh, your work yeah, to be? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I don't know. I think in my head they're kind of like post-gender, pre-gender, these kind of post-modern things that mm. are kind of both genderless but at the same time multi-gendered. Mm. Um, and I think. Because I'm really thinking about um, the monument as a um, as a social and a public, I guess, phenomenon, and especially in the West, like lots of most of the monuments are of men, um, and there's a very kind of um, it's very specific um, gendered discourse around that. So I think the way I wanted to present them was a bit more fluid and a bit more kind of open in that respect. So you're trying to bring, for example, women or um, LGBT people. Yeah. Um, population into, into the conversation. Yeah, that's it. Mm, that's pretty cool. I think this Thank is exactly you. what we need um, in this uh, in this year, especially because yeah. uh, with all the Me Too movement and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then uh, your artwork is called Mud Man, yeah. Volume Two, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, can I can I ask you why do you call them men? Men. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think what I think the reference point are statues of men. And I think um, having these things that have kind of really long hair, have breasts, um, being perceived as men, I think men is more of a figurative um, gesture in this respect. It's also following on from a um, solo exhibition I had at the National Gallery of Australia called Mud Men. Um, and it was a kind of similar iteration, different work. Um, so I think it was really just to kind of focus the discussion on representations of men and kind of move on from there. So men is the asexual word? I guess in my head it, these could be men or women, but it was also just to kind of uh, it, it focus the discussion onto representations of the male body and then uh, move on from there. I see. Yeah. But why is it called mud? Is it oh, okay. mud? Yeah, uh, it, well, technically, I think um, most of it's ceramic and uh. it comes from the earth. And um, people who, I guess, who exist in lots of ceramic communities often talk about making their things from mud. Um, and I think that kind of gesture of making things from the earth is a kind of figurative kind of narrative I'd like to impart mm. into these things. I think, um, like I always imagine, like my in my view, I want people to look at them and think someone with like huge hands mm. kind of made them. Um, so that's, because essentially clay does come from the earth. I see. So one last 
question. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about Hong Kong at Basel? So how does it differ from yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all the art shows yeah. that you've been? Okay, well, this is the first time I've been to Hong Kong. Oh, really? Um, and so I'm really excited. It's just I haven't actually had an opportunity to explore the city because mm. I kind of jumped on the plane and installed <laughs> this, and then um, all of a sudden it's the opening. But um, it's got a really good vibe, and it looks really beautiful. And I'm just really happy to be here. I hope you enjoy Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you.